how should people in their 30s and moving into uh, an older right. age, how should they start thinking like, I need, I need a test booster? Right, just to add a little bit of knowledge or a little bit of know-how into why that works for you the way it has been, is anytime that you're using the largest muscles in your body, which would be the leg group, uh, anytime that you're involving that into your daily protocol, you're forcing your body to go past its capabilities naturally. Mm -hmm. So by using your legs, by squatting, by lunging, your body has to naturally adapt to produce more blood flow. You're gonna volumize with blood. So there's gonna be times that you're doing legs, but feeling like, man, I feel I feel full, I feel I strong. Love it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You have that effer effervescence. It's like you crazy, just like I do, I do legs, and, and I, I lunge at a very specific part of, of this gym, mm -hmm. straight up pure vanity, because there's a mirror, and, there's nothing and wrong with that. I just get so vascular. That's nothing wrong with that. But I'm lunging, and I'm like, what's going on? What we might have to think about for you is that if you have one specific place that you feel comfortable, what we can do, perhaps, is get you like a GoPro attachment with a face mirror. <laughs> So that anywhere you go, you can oh, properly obviously. see your whole body. And then I can just later on. And you could lunge into video. traffic if you wanted to. <laughs> That's it. That's well, it. so by using so much of the larger groups of muscle, you're volumizing your blood flow and you're forcing your body to have a higher caloric expenditure. And what that just means is throughout the course of the day, not just when you're at work, but when you're at rest, you're producing more turnover of your blood cells and burning more calories throughout the day. So not just while you're working out, when we're standing here, when you're on, on the couch watching television, when you're in the bathroom sitting down, you're gonna continue to burn more calories throughout the day by forcing your body to do that one action in one part of the day, you've increased your overall daily expenditure. So that's something that is, is a natural form of boosting your testosterone. As a man being now that I'm 32 years old, I do experience some of the dip effect, so to speak, where you don't quite feel as aggressive. Like in my early 20s, I felt like half human, maybe half gorilla, maybe half lemur, something small, <laughs> not as aggressive, but hairy nonetheless. Uh, but now, now as time goes by, you don't quite feel the same and you are, what's, what's most apparent is that you're more prone to injury. So you can't work out as aggressively without having a longer recovery period. And testosterone really, people think is more for building muscles, and it's gonna create this monster out of you. More often than not, testosterone is gonna help you for the recovery aspect of your training. So every time that you're in the gym, you wanna be tearing muscle cells down and basically beating your body into submission. Testosterone is basically the way that you're going to recover and recreate that muscle that you tore down, but this time it'll be stronger. So to get back to your question, between the ages, like I said, of 28 when it dips, to anywhere in the future, if you're working out hard enough, you're gonna require more. And I would say for guys like us that are in their 30s, this would be the ideal time frame, so that you're not missing out. And before that you get to that, that buffer period of, if I get into my 40s, into my 50s, and I'm still training hard, you're just counting the days for the injury to come. It's gonna happen. So with that, right, so taking a testosterone booster is great for you, especially once you start passing the, the, the later 20s, early 30s, and so on and so forth. A lot of people, because they don't know they can get misinformation and things like that, they think, oh man, that's basically like steroids, right. slash my liver's gonna just shrink, yeah. and I'm gonna die. I have a full on kidney explosion. Yeah, I've heard it all. Kidney. I've so heard it all. What do you say to that person besides, for sure, do a better Google search? Right, okay, so when a person has those feelings, and you're gonna encounter them, specifically, yeah from people that are what we like to refer to as the layman, maybe not the most appropriate term for people that don't know much about lifting weights or how the body works. They're thinking testosterone in the way that in the 80s we thought Lyle Alzado got cancer because he took steroids. Yeah. That's not the function of testosterone and every human being has testosterone, including women. Mm -hmm. So what you have to keep in mind is one, what your goals are and what your physical capacity would be. So if I weighed 100 pounds, at 28 years old, I really don't have any risk of becoming some 300 pound Ronnie Coleman monster. No. So testosterone serves many functions. One of them would be for your vitality. Obviously as men get older, you wanna stay active, you wanna keep your lady happy, not as easy to do when you get old. Things to think about in your 30s are, how long can I perform at this level? What can I achieve moving forward physically? and how sustainable is it? And as your testosterone begins to wane, those things become harder and harder to do. So I would certainly say within this time frame, do some research, but don't go crazy. 
Testosterone is not steroids. Testosterone is not the, the hallmark that you would think of in your mind, like, oh, I'm gonna test positive like those Russians did in the Olympics in, in the 80s and, and 70s. And then jog up. Exactly, I'm gonna grow a beard overnight and then I'm a chick, now I don't look so hot anymore, guys don't like me. That's not something to even fathom in any capacity. Just like people say, Adam, I wanna work out and I wanna look good, I don't wanna look like you though. Like, okay, well, one, thank you for saying I look bad. <laughs> Two, even if you tried, if your body does not allow, if your specific muscle capacity is such that you can't gain much muscle, don't look at my achievements and say, I don't wanna look like that if you can't achieve such things. Not to mention caloric intake. Right, there's too many variables involved and I would never steer somebody in a direction to fail. Yeah. Like when you train someone, let's say, who's young, and I do from time to time have younger athletes that are between the ages of like 18 and 21. That's the time that you, you can push yourself to an almost Hulkamania level where you can put your ear up and let people know that you mean business because those are what we refer to as newbie gains mm -hmm. where you get in the gym and you've never done anything before. Your body is going to adhere to lifting weights and, and strength training like nobody's business. But like we were talking about, about needing testosterone, that's not going to last forever. You're going to get to a point where you hit a wall where you're not creating new muscle or the muscle that you had is not sticking to you the way that you want it to, that would be the time to even begin to, to allow yourself to not get to the point where it's like, man, now I'm old, now everything hurts. My knee, my elbow, my chest deflated on me. These balloons I used to have are looking small. I don't wanna look shriveled, my butt fell off. Yeah. You wanna to try to avoid that. You wanna create a buffer before that zone even comes near you. Yeah. So taking that testosterone boost in your early 30s, I would say, 100%, that would be the best time.